The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. The 18th chapter beginning at the 15th verse. Jesus said, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, this was our Gospel reading for this past Sunday. And uh, Dr. Coe gave an excellent sermon. If you'd like to hear that, go to the website, ChristCH.org, Worship, and then Sermons. And you can access that. It was really good. Uh, I want to just add a few of my own comments on it uh, in addition to his. Um, and, uh, and, and hope that that's a reflection which is in some part may be a blessing to you. I want to start um, with uh, something that I, I have uh, said many times uh, because it really jumps out at me as we go through our Christian life together uh, under the authority of Scripture as we live uh, with the testimony of the apostles. The apostolic testimony of Jesus' life and ministry makes clear that the kingdom of God is, as I like to say, just that personal. The kingdom of God is just that personal. You know, you'll, you'll hear Jesus saying things like, when you give a party, don't just invite people who can invite you back, but invite people who can't invite you back. Or he'll say, when you pray, don't do like the hypocrites do so that people can see them. When you give alms, don't do it like hypocrites do. You see? Or he says to Peter and James and John, I will make you fishers of men. You come follow me. Again and again and again, we see how very personal the kingdom of God is. And so in this passage, this is how Jesus starts. If your brother sins against you. And what we begin to realize right off the bat is that um, Jesus is not um, giving a paper um, uh, in, in, in an academic setting uh, on uh, a topic that is of interest to him, so he's going to write a paper about it. The, the church is not about ideas in case you know, someone wanted to look it up sometime because they were bored. Instead, Jesus is about, and the life of the church is about, me, and you, and us, and our actual lives. Jesus is looking at us and saying, I have something to say to you. Do, do you remember Luke chapter 7 when he's, he goes to a Pharisee, invites him to his house and to have supper, and the, a woman of the city comes and starts washing his feet, and, and the Pharisee's thinking, mm, if this guy was a prophet, he would know who was touching him, and boy, mm, that's no good. And, and, and Jesus says, the guy's name is Simon, his host, he says, Simon, I have something I want to say to you. Imagine, you know, um, it's a whole different ball game um, when we think that we're just at the back of the crowd listening as much as we want to listen, but we can leave whenever we want to leave and it really, it's not personal. The difference between that and having the Lord Jesus Christ say, Ted, I want to say something to you. I counted up the time, number of times that your or you is used in these um, five verses. And it's 12 times. The kingdom of God 
is just that personal. We are being called by Christ, each of us personally, to make an active choice to undertake forgiveness and reconciliation and amendment of life in our relationships in accord with his teaching. You see, we're not given the option by God of saying, um, well, I know that the work of forgiveness and repentance and reconciliation and amendment of life are things that are on the Christian list, on the Christian menu. But, but I'm going to like pick and choose from that and the other options as I might see fit. No, he's saying... You are to undertake the work of reconciliation in your relationships. The kingdom of God is just that personal. My guess is that your life is like my life. There are people in your life, there are relationships in your life that are unreconciled to some degree or another. And I know from my own experience that that's uncomfortable. And that the, and that the temptation is to simply nurture the hurt in one's mind. You know, it's nice to have boogeymen, the bad guys. It's nice to have bad guys to sort of go to in your mind. And the temptation is to, to just to let that be because it's hard work. But Jesus is calling us to that because it's the central work of his ministry on earth. You know, 2 Corinthians 5. Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself and giving us the ministry of reconciliation. That's the ministry he's given us. The kingdom is just that personal. It's not just an idea, but what you and I are, are called to do. And, and secondly, I would say to you today that, um, that, that he, he talks about it to us in a way which makes clear that it's going to take some perseverance to do. It's going to take some time and some effort. You know, we have a process that assumes that maybe many steps. First, go to him privately or her. Try to work it out together. Then you might have to take it along a couple of people to support you in it. Bring some people in who can verify, who can be help you, you hold each other accountable, who can verify the truth, who can be mediators and friends and guides. And then you may have to <laughs> go to the church. And then you may have to, yeah. He envisions a multi-stage process, perseverance. What he's saying is, is that forgiveness and reconciliation and amendment of life of whoever was doing the sinning in the relationship is worth the effort. It's worth the effort. So be prepared for the effort. Um, and yet we still need convincing. And, and here's, here, here's one of the, the, the convincers that I think that he's trying to lay before us. He says, um, <clears throat> what we're talking about is um, family, siblings. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him. And if he listens to you, you have gained your brother. I don't know. I don't know what the actual state of affairs is in your families. You know, between you and your siblings, between you and your parents, between you and your children, between you and your grandchildren, between you know you and your cousins, aunts and uncles, and all of that stuff. Maybe it's not that great. I don't. I don't know. But I tell you what. Um, I've lived long enough to know that um, there's a. I've seen this in my own extended family, and I've seen it in others as a pastor and just as a person who lives in the world. Um, it's one thing 
to be unreconciled because of sin and unforgiveness and unreconciliation. To be unreconciled with somebody. And it's another thing to be in that state with your brother. Right? Your sister. Your mother. Your father. Your grandchild. Cousin. There's just something about family. You know? If the whole world was against me, truly against me, and Catherine was for me, I'd be all right. Because it's different. And what Jesus is saying is that J.D. is my brother, and that Patty is my sister, and that Lucy is my family. And yeah, it'll take perseverance. But he calls us personally to it because he believes and he means for us to be family. And finally, I would say that um, part of the, the responsibility of it, the work of forgiving and amending our lives when we need to because we've sinned and that's why we had to forgive, Part of the responsibility of it, but also part of the promise of it, is that what happens here is part and parcel of, of the promise and gift and grace of eternal life. You know, he says at the end of this passage, Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father. In heaven, there's a sense that um, that God has decided that that what happens, He honors us and He honors the life of the world by saying what happens there matters. It doesn't just not matter. He says your life matters, your decisions matter. What, what what if what if God said what you do doesn't matter one lick? That'd be kind of Depressing, sort of despairing, that, that, that nothing that, that I did mattered at all. Yeah, it didn't matter. He said, what you do about all this matters in terms of eternity. That if you were able to forgive someone, if you were able to let them forgive you, if you all were able to reconcile with one another, that would make a difference to our Father who is in heaven who grants eternal life. The, the promise is, is that when we try to do this hard work now, we are beginning to become the people of heaven. Kingdom people. Kingdom people don't just sit at the back and say, well, I know all that stuff's on the menu, but I'm not picking and choosing any of it right now. Kingdom people say, I heard the call of Christ. My Lord Jesus looked me in the eye and said, Forgive as you have been forgiven. Seek reconciliation as I have reconciled you to our Father. Kingdom people. What happens on earth is related to heaven. What is promised in heaven begins to work itself out on earth. Well, that's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> May God grant us His Holy Spirit and His own presence in our lives. That leading us and guiding us, protecting us, empowering us, forgiving us when we stumble along this way. We may indeed walk the path of reconciliation with our brothers and sisters, even now, even us, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, again, welcome. Boy, it's good to be together here on Wednesday morning. I just love seeing you here and celebrating this time of worship with you. I'm glad you came today. Pass the word. Uh, we're, we're not asking for 
um, a, an electronic registration like we are on Sunday because we normally don't get for this service so many folks that we have to um, cut off uh, attendance. So just come and space yourselves out, um, wear the mask and, and all of that. So um, announcements include that you'll be seeing soon. Um, uh, Jay, remind me, what Sunday we start the 8 o'clock service? Um, we just talked about it staff yesterday, but uh, I should have be prepared myself. But in a couple of weeks. The 27th. Okay, the 27th. That's right. So 8 o'clock, 27th. We will ask you to register for that service. Um, yes. And um, we are beginning an uh, adult um, a discipleship class on Sunday morning that Jay and I both will teach together on the pastoral epistles, 1st and 2nd Timothy and uh, Titus. Uh, we might throw Philemon in too if we have time there. Good to get in the apostolic testimony past those first couple of letters of Paul and, and see what's happening later in the New Testament. Um, so I, I encourage you to look for information about that. We'll be starting that on um, the 27th. Yes, 27. So rolling things out. And we hope to start a class on Wednesday night, just a class, no meal, uh, in the, uh, on October 7th. But we'll confirm that with you as we get closer to that and see how uh, everything's going. So we're going to do as much as we can. We're not going to worry about what we can't do. And we're going to do it safely. So as you're able to come, I hope you will come. And when you do come, I hope you'll uh, join in to how we're doing things safely. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due His name, bring offerings, and come to His courts.